So let's cast our mind back to when Tutankhamun became king. He was 14 years of age, approximately. And I'm going on the CAT scan evidence that he died when he was about 23 years of age and he ruled Egypt for nine years. So he was about 14 years of age. Well, the trusted vizier and his tutor for, from a young age was a chap called I. And he um, served at least two or three kings. We know that he cut a tomb at uh, Amarna, so he was definitely serving Akhenaten. And then we had Semenkarkara, and then Nethriu Ra, and now Tutankhamun. So he's been around a while, okay? And he's got a sidekick called Nart Min. And both men, uh, Nart Min is, is an officer in the army, and I is in government. And I is, is a long-serving bureaucrat. Well, very early in the reign of Tutankhamun, he sends a rising star called Horemheb with uh, uh, the duty of representing the king in foreign lands. So Horemheb goes off to uh, the land of Kush, a diplomatic mission, uh, probably to get access to the gold mines, continued access for the gold mines um, in return for not interfering too much in Kush itself. When he comes back, he's so successful that an ambassador from Kush visits Egypt. Then Tutankhamun uh, promotes him to commander of all the king's armies, royal fan bearer to the king. Wow. I think this was Tutankhamun's way of checkmating I. And of course, when rogues fall out. So, when Tutankhamun died, I rushes forward, marries the widow of Tutankhamun, um, Anka Essen Amun, and he also buries Tutankhamun in his tomb, which was for him in the Valley of the Kings, in the Eastern Valley. The Western Valley was a tomb that was having cut for Tutankhamun, but to, for some reason Tutankhamun died suddenly, and I gives him burial. By doing so, he ascends to the throne as the living Horus, sort of checkmating Horeb. And he announces that um, uh, Nart Min is going to be his crown prince and successor. Wow, that's a big thing. So Horemheb, so you've got two camps, the I camp and the Horemheb of King I, um, who ruled in the 18th dynasty. He was the successor of Tutankhamun. His, uh, his regnal reign is difficult to date. He could have ruled Egypt for four years, seven years or nine years. The king took the pre-nomen, the throne name of Kepa Keperu Ra, which means the everlasting manifestations of Ra. He was going to bring the new order back to Egypt on the death of Tutankhamun. In my own personal belief, I think Tutankhamun was going down those lines anyway, um, but I was just capitalising on what was going on. The background of I was that he was High Vizier to Tutankhamun and also Semen Karkara, and also he was the overseer of the uh, great houses of His Majesty uh, Akhenaten. I came from the city of Akhmen which produced quite a few high officials who served in the ancient Egyptian bureaucracy. So he'd been around for a while, he knew the ropes. When Tutankhamun died, I empowered himself by marrying Tutankhamun's widow, Anka Essen Amun. He buried Tutankhamun in the, in the Eastern Valley, the Valley of the Kings. Now what we think happened was that I was having a tomb cut in the Valley of the Kings, a very small affair. The king was on his deathbed, so he had to quickly assemble some funeral objects. And one of the ideas is that he went into the Valley of the Kings, opened up Tutankhamun's um, 
relatives tombs and took objects out of those tombs. The original intention was for Tutankhamun to be buried in the Western Valley which became Ai's uh, tomb when he died. Now between the time of Tutankhamun being on his deathbed dying of blood poisoning and uh, her marriage to Ai his widow or future widow Anka Essen Amun uh, we think possibly she wrote to the Hittite king asking him to send a prince to Egypt so that she could marry well that was a big taboo and the reason why she's saying this is because she doesn't want to marry a servant and that servant was probably I anyway uh, eventually a second letter was received by uh, the Queen of Egypt the Hittite king did send a son and he seems to have been murdered en route so that's again speculative but it may have happened because I had married uh, Anka Essen Amun and gave burial to Tutankhamun he could claim the throne of Egypt as the living Horus which he did was I related to royalty uh, sort of 20 30 years ago the idea was that he was the father of Nefertiti um, and that's his claim that uh, Tutankhamun was his grand grandson but it's highly unlikely that uh, a family member would be in um, in office serving those different kings uh, this isn't the old kingdom where the king of Egypt gave those special jobs to family members there's been a bureaucracy in Egypt for on and off a thousand years so it's highly unlikely that he ever was the father of Nefertiti on the death of Ai he was succeeded by a general and commander of the armies Horemheb now what's interesting is before Ai uh, died so he appointed a military officer called Nart Min uh, to succeed him as the crown prince and king's son. When rogues fall out, so you've got I, who was the vizier and the man behind the throne of Tutankhamun. You've got Horemheb, who's the commander of the army. Let's find out what's going on. Horemheb. How did he empower himself with kingship when I died? He was a commoner. Um, he didn't have any raw blood in him. So you'd have to marry a queen of Egypt to be empowered with kingship. Well, he married uh, a woman called Mutneda Met. And that's the same name, possibly, of a daughter that I had. So maybe he followed his predecessor's tricks by marrying a daughter uh, who would have been a queen of Egypt or princess of Egypt to empower himself with kingship. He had Ai's tomb desecrated, which was Western Valley 23, had his images and cartouches removed. What's interesting is when you do look at Ai's tomb, the people he sent couldn't read hieroglyphs because they couldn't, uh, they didn't remove his cartouches. And that's simply because they couldn't read them. Hormheb also desecrated the uh, Mulchi temple of uh, Ai. So uh, originally the Mulchi temple was Tutankhamun's. Ai took it over and Horemheb took it over from Ai. Now, these guys have been kicking around for a while. Um, I, I, I get the impression that Horemheb felt that I betrayed him. I think they had a deal going when Akhenaten died, that one or both of them would become king of Egypt. Um, and when um, I appointed Nart Min as his successor, I feel that Hormheb um, felt a little bit disheartened, shall we say. I don't think Tutankhamun trusted I that much because he made Hormheb the commander of the army and also fan bearer of the king and I think that was way that was a way of Tutankhamun checkmating I while he was still alive and then when he died obviously I took advantage of the situation 
and made himself king. But through the devices of law, not the device of arms. Because really, Hormheb was command of the army. He could have sent in his troops, but he didn't do that. Remember, Egypt's coming out of this difficult period of artism where there is only one god in Egypt to restore in all the gods, the, all the old gods. Um, so he's following the guidelines of, of what was before. He's following tradition. And because I married uh, Tutankhamun's widow and he buried Tutankhamun, he just had to let it run. And he's probably thought to himself, he's an old boy anyway, he's not going to last long. And anyway, I've killed his uh, crown prince and his adopted son, Narkdamin, and now I'm in line for the throne. So with um, I out of the way, Hormheb became the successor uh, to the throne of Egypt. Now, these are variable dates, they move with new data, but the current one is 1306 BCE to 1019 BCE. So it's speculative that he ruled Egypt between sort of 10 and 13 years. He came from common birth. He was originally, his first appointment for Tutankhamun was the royal spokesman on foreign affairs and he made a, a trip to Kush, um, probably just to smooth things over, um, to make sure that there was access to the gold mines and that sort of thing. Then he was made chief commander of the army and advisor to King Tutankhamun. So as I mentioned earlier, maybe this was a way of checkmating I while Tutankhamun was alive. Also called the fan bearer on the right side of the king. That meant that he had the ear of the king. His confidence was king's messenger and sole companion. Again, that shows that there's a relationship between Tutankhamun and Horemheb. If Horemheb, as is, is evidence, uh, desecrated the tomb of Ai, uh, why didn't he do that to Tutankhamun? simply because they were great friends and he was um, a faithful servant to the king and that's why I don't think he desecrated his tomb. During his reign, Hormheb did make reforms. He appointed his own judges. He appointed members to tribunals. With the priesthood of Amun-Ra, he recruited priests from the army. They were going to be his spies to keep an eye on the priesthood, make sure it wasn't going to get above them. So not even he tr trusted the priesthood of Amun-Ra. He knew that the estates of Amun-Ra had lots of resources and that they would plot against anyone to keep in power. When it came to legal power, Hormheb divided amongst three. A vizier for Upper Egypt, vizier for South Southern Egypt, and unusually um, uh, an equal share of power for the city of Memphis, which he recognised. And then, of course, you had the viceroy of uh, Kush, uh, which was appointed by Horemheb. He renewed the tomb of Tutmosis IV because during the time of the 18th dynasty, the move from Waset to Amarna and then to Memphis and back to Waset again. Unfortunately, robbers had broken into the tomb of Tutmosis IV and partially robbed it. He had it restored with objects and resealed. As a builder, he uh, built the second and ninth pylons at Karnak. Now these were projects started by Amenhotep III and abandoned when he died. He continued building the 10th pylon, which originally was uh, Tutankhamun's pylon at Karnak. And again, it's usurping monuments. is not destroying uh, somebody's idea. It's just taking it over. You know, I'm stuck with this, so I'm going to take the credit for it. Now, he didn't have a son and successor, so he adopted um, one of his generals who was... Um, who was going to be Ramesses I. So Ramesses I is the successor to Hormheb and the first king of the 19th dynasty. And with him comes his son, Seti I. 
and his grandson, Ramesses II. So something to look forward to very, very soon. Well, um, thank you for watching this. If you'd like to support this project, which is the video project, um, I intend to go to Egypt, make a video tour of the idea is that you can download it onto a phone and use that tour when you visit. To do this, I need funding. So on the next card are the details. If you'd like to support the project, donate a pound, it's up to you. Or you could donate the whole 6,000. That's what I need. Uh, I'd be really appreciative. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was informative and entertaining and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.